Watch me prove 11 trig identities that keep getting more difficult. Let me know in the comments what number you could get to. I'll link in the description this identity page which I'll be using to help with the proofs. Identity number one. Let me separate into left side and right side. To prove this is an identity, I have to show that this equation is true for all values of the variable. So I just have to show both the left and right are actually the exact same expressions. And I'll do that using identities I know to be true. For example, I know that tan x is always equal to sine x over cos x based on the quotient identity. And now that I've replaced tan with sine over cos, I see that I have a factor of cosine being divided by a factor of cosine. I can cancel those factors out. And on the right, my expression is equivalent to a sine function. Left and right are the same. This is an identity. Left side equals right side. Identity number two. I'll separate into left and right side. The first thing I notice is on the right side, I have a single term, but on the left, I have two terms being added. So to show that they're equal expressions, I'm going to combine the terms on the left by getting a common denominator. I'll zoom in here. The first term I'll multiply by one minus sine x top and bottom and the second term by one plus sine x top and bottom. I'm just making their common denominator the product of the two denominators. So now I can rewrite those two terms as a single term over the common denominator, which is one plus sine x times one minus sine x. And in the numerator, I have one minus sine x plus one plus sine x. At this point, you should notice that we have a negative sine x plus a sine x, that's zero. So in the numerator, I'm just left with two. In the denominator, I have a difference of squares. One plus sine times one minus sine would just be one squared minus sine squared, which I could just write as one minus sine squared x. And based on the Pythagorean identity, I know that one minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x. And if I move to the right side of this equation, I know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I know I can replace that secant squared x with one over cosine squared x. And that leaves me with two divided by cosine squared x, which is exactly equal to the expression on the left side of the equation. So this is an identity. We're done the proof. Left side equals right side. Identity number three. I'll separate into left and right side. To prove this identity, I'm going to use a strategy called multiplying by the conjugate. I'm going to multiply top and bottom of the left side of this equation by the conjugate of the denominator. That means by one minus sine x. Because I'm doing it to the top and bottom, I'm not changing its value, I'm really just multiplying it by one. But when I rewrite this as a single fraction, you will see why that's useful. Notice in the denominator, I created a difference of squares. One plus sine times one minus sine is equal to one squared minus sine squared. And one minus sine squared based on the Pythagorean identity is equal to cosine squared. In the numerator, I have one factor of cosine and the denominator, I have two factors of cosine. So I could cancel out one pair of those. I'll cancel out the cosine in the numerator with one of the cosines that's in the denominator. So I'm left with one minus sine x over cosine of x, which is exactly equal to the right side of this equation. So we've proven the identity. Identity number four. I'll separate into left and right side. I'll start by using my quotient identity, which tells me tan is equal to sine over cos, so I can replace those tan squareds with sine squared over cos squared. And on the right side, I have sine squared times sine squared, which is sine to the power of 4x, right? When multiplying powers of the same base, we add the exponents, and that's over cos squared x. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to the right side of this equation, so I'll leave it like that. But on the left side, I have two terms being subtracted. I want to combine those into a single term so it matches the right side. So I need a common denominator. I'll multiply the sine squared over one by cos squared top and bottom. Now that they have a common denominator of cosine squared, I can write them as a single fraction. The two terms in the numerator both have a factor of sine squared x, so I'll common factor that out. When I divide both terms by the sine squared x I common factored out, I get one minus cosine squared x. Based on the Pythagorean identity, I know that one minus cosine squared x is equal to sine squared x. And last step, sine squared times sine squared is sine to the power of four x. I've shown the left and right sides are equal. Left side equals right side. That identity is proven. Identity number five.
I'll separate into left side and right side. Notice I rewrote sine x plus cos x squared as sine x plus cos x times another sine x plus cos x, right? That's what it means. Now I'm going to expand the left side of this equation. My first product is sine squared x. My next product will be sine x cos x. And the next product will again be sine x cos x. So I'll just combine those together to say that there are two sine x cos x. And the last product would be cos times cos, which is cosine squared x. Notice that I have a sine squared x plus a cosine squared x. The Pythagorean identity tells me that that's equal to 1. So I can replace that sum with 1. So I have 1 plus 2 sine x cos x. And on the right side of this equation, I see a double angle identity. Sine of 2x is equal to 2 times sine x cos x. Left and right side are equal. That identity is proven. Identity number 6. Let me separate into left and right side. On the left side of this identity, notice the first thing I did was I changed cosine to the power of 4 of x into a cosine squared x squared. The reason I did that is now I can notice that I have a difference of squares. So I can factor this into cos squared x minus sine squared x times cosine squared x plus sine squared x. This is the Pythagorean identity. That's equal to 1. So on the left, I just have cos squared minus sine squared. On the right side of this equation, I have cosine of a double angle. The double angle identity for cosine is actually equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Left side equals right side, so that identity is proven. Identity number seven. Let me separate into left and right side. I'm going to start by changing all of my cosecant functions to 1 over sine and all of my secant functions to 1 over cos. Okay, on the left side of this equation, I don't like the way those denominators look. I want to make both of the denominators be a single term. So I'm going to change the 1s so they have a common denominator with 1 over sine x. So I'm going to rewrite both of those 1s as sine x over sine x. And then both of those denominators, let me write those as single terms. Both of these terms, I have a fraction divided by a fraction. So I can follow the rule that tells me I can change it to multiplication if I multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator. I have sine divided by sine, that's 1, so I can cancel that out. And over here as well, I can cancel those factors of sine. Let me just shrink my work so I have room to do more. I have 1 over 1 minus sine x plus 1 over 1 plus sine x. If I get a common denominator between these terms, I would have 1 plus sine x plus 1 minus sine x over my common denominator, which is 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine, which is a difference of squares, which is 1 minus sine squared, which is just equal to cosine squared. And in the numerator, I have a sine minus sine. Those cancel out. So my final answer, I'm just left with in the numerator 1 plus 1, which is 2, over cosine squared x. If I zoom out, you can see that's the same as the right side of this equation. So I've proven the identity. Here's identity number eight. Let me separate into left and right side. The right side of the equation, I just have cosecant x, which is one over sine x. The left side, I have quite a bit of work to do. Let me start by replacing the cotangent x using the quotient identity. I know that's equal to cos x over sine x. And then when I multiply those factors in the numerator, cos times cos is cos squared. So I have cosine squared x over sine x, and that's all being divided by 1 minus sine x. I can rewrite that expression by multiplying sine x by 1 minus sine x. And I want to subtract 1. I am going to want to combine these two terms together. So I'll rewrite that 1 so that it has a common denominator with the other term. So I'll make the denominator sine x times 1 minus sine x. Let me make some more room. Now that I have a common denominator, I can rewrite it as a single fraction over that common denominator. I'll expand the numerator by distributing the negative sine x to both terms in brackets. That gives me cosine squared x minus sine x plus sine squared x. 
hopefully you notice in the numerator, I've got a cosine squared x plus a sine squared x. That's the Pythagorean identity. That's equal to 1. So I can replace the cos squared plus sine squared with 1. So in the numerator, I just have 1 minus sine x, and then I'll rewrite my denominator. And then I can cancel out that whole factor of 1 minus sine x that's in the numerator with the factor of 1 minus sine x that's in the denominator. 1 minus sine x divided by 1 minus sine x, something divided by itself is 1, so I'm still left with 1 in the numerator. In the denominator, I just have sine x. That's exactly the same as the right side of the equation, so this equation is an identity. It's been proven. Identity number 9. I'll separate into left side and right side. I notice on the left side of this equation, I have two compound angle identities I can use. So I'll rewrite cosine of x minus y using the compound angle identity. I know that's equal to cos x cos y plus sine x sine y. And cos of x plus y is cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. Now, on the left side of this equation, I have only sine and cos functions. On the right side, I only have tan functions. I want to show that they're the same, so I'm going to rewrite each of those tan functions using the quotient identity as sine over cos. Now, I notice when I multiply those fractions together, the denominator is going to be cos x cos y. I'm going to want to collect that term with the 1, so I'll change the 1 to cos x cos y over cos x cos y. So I just changed this one to that term, which is equal to 1. And now I'm going to do the same thing in the denominator. I'm going to rewrite that 1 as a cos x cos y over cos x cos y. So that one changed to this, which is equal to 1. Notice the fractions in the numerator that are being added have a common denominator, so I can write them as a single fraction. And I can also do the same with the fractions in the denominator. I can combine those. Now when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, we can just multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction that's in the denominator. Let me make some room to do that. And now you can see that this factor of cos x cos y can be divided by that factor of cos x cos y to equal 1, so those factors are gone. And what we're left with is exactly what's on the left side of the equation. The left side is exactly equal to the right side, so this equation is an identity. It's been proven. Identity number 10. I'll separate into left side, right side. On the left side of this equation, I have only sine and cos functions. On the right side, I have only tan functions. I think I'm going to start working on the left side of this and see if I can change those to be tan functions. So I'm going to start by separating these into uh, two separate terms that are being subtracted. I've got the 1 that's being divided by cos to the power of 4x, minus I have the sine squared, cos squared, that is being divided by cos to the power of 4x. And that cos to the power of 4x, let me actually rewrite that as cos squared times cos squared. I'm going to do that so you can see that those cos squareds cancel out. And the quotient identity tells me that sine squared over cos squared is tan squared. And also I'm going to rewrite that 1 over cos to the power of 4 of x as secant to the power of 4 of x. That's based on the reciprocal identity. Now that secant to the power of 4 of x, I could think of that as a secant squared x being squared. And secant squared x I know is equal to tan squared x plus 1. And then if I expand that binomial that is being squared, tan squared x plus 1 all squared is equal to tan to the power of 4x plus 2 tan squared x plus 1. And I have a couple like terms I can collect. I've got a 2 tan squared x minus a tan squared x. That's 1 tan squared x. Notice that's exactly equal to what's on the right side of the equation. So this equation is an identity. It's been proven. And here's the final identity, identity number 11. Let me separate into left and right side. There's a couple things I notice. I think I'm going to start by rewriting this product of tan squared times secant squared. Tan squared based on the quotient identity is equal to sine squared x divided by cosine squared x. And secant squared based on the reciprocal identity is 1 over cosine squared x. And now I can find the product of those three factors. It would be 3 sine squared x over cosine to the power of 4 
of x. I'm going to leave that right side and now move over to the left side, where I actually notice I have a difference of cubes there. To make that obvious, I'll rewrite these. Secant to the power of 6 of x, I could rewrite that as secant squared of x being cubed minus tan squared x being cubed. So it's a difference of two perfect cube values. I can follow a difference of cubes factoring formula. That formula tells you that this would factor to secant squared x minus tan squared x multiplied by secant squared x squared, which is just secant to the power of 4 of x, plus secant squared x times tan squared x, plus tan squared x squared, which is tan to the power of 4 of x. This secant squared x, well, I know secant squared is equal to tan squared plus 1. So let me replace that secant squared with tan squared plus 1. And the reason I did that is because I now have a tan squared minus a tan squared. So all I'm left with in that factor is just 1. And then my second factor, because I changed the right side to be in terms of sine and cos, I'm going to rewrite all these secants and tans to be in terms of sine and cos as well. I'll change the secants to 1 over coses and the tans to sine over coses. Notice all three terms that are being added together. They all have a common denominator, cosine to the power of 4 of x. So I can rewrite those three terms as a single term over that common denominator. Now I'm going to compare this to the right side. Notice I have a cosine to the power of 4x and a cosine to the power of 4x. That's great. The denominators are looking the same. On the right side, I have three sine squareds, but over here I just have one sine squared. So I'm going to have to somehow rewrite these other two terms to be able to generate two more sine squareds to add together. Because I'm interested in generating more sine squareds, I think I'm going to start by changing this one using the Pythagorean identity, change it to sine squared plus cos squared. And now this sine to the power of 4x, I can think of that as a sine squared x times a sine squared x. But remember, sine squared x, based on the Pythagorean identity, I could change one of those, or both, I'm just going to change one of them, to 1 minus cos squared of x. Why am I doing that? Because when I distribute this sine squared x to that 1, I get another sine squared x term. So there will be 1, 2, 3 sine squared x's, which is what I need from the right side. And don't forget, this is all over cosine to the power of 4 of x. So let me expand the sine squared x into the 1 minus cos squared x. I'm going to make some more room to continue doing work. I'm now going to collect these sine squared terms together. There are three of them being added together, so I have three sine squared x. And then notice of the two terms that I have remaining, the ones highlighted in green, they both contain a cosine squared x factor, so I'm going to common factor a cosine squared x from both of those terms. Hopefully you can see now how we're going to create this term of 1. 1 minus sine squared is equal to cos squared, so when I multiply cos squared times cos squared, I get cos to the power of 4x, and that's being divided by cos to the power of 4x, so that quotient is going to be 1. So all I did on that line is change the 1 minus sine squared to cos squared. Cos squared times cos squared, let me rewrite that as cos to the power of 4x. Let me now separate this into two fractions that are being added. Right, Both terms in the numerator are both being divided by cosine to the power of 4x. But of course, cosine to the power of 4x being divided by itself is 1. And there you have it. You can see that the left side of the equation is equal to the right side of the equation, so this equation is an identity. It's been proven. Make sure to let me know down in the comments how you did on these identities. Did you find them difficult? Which ones did you get stuck on? And what series do you want to see me do next? Jensen,